Mr Deputy President, with the privatisation of electricity assets, ports and lands across New South Wales, the Baird government is receiving a one-off surge of capital. And it's proposing to spend those billions of dollars, that one-off surge of billions of dollars, primarily on infrastructure. $16 billion going on one private motorway, billions more being spent on light and heavy rail. But one asset, indeed the most important asset of all, has missed out on that expenditure. That is our children. And the challenge that we make today as Greens to all, to all parties in this chamber is to ensure that we set aside a minimum $1 billion to be spent on the families and the children of this state to empower communities to prevent children falling into care in the first place. Why is it important in New South Wales? Well, across Australia, we see that half the kids in care in this country are here in New South Wales. And, and worse still, when we look at Aboriginal children, one in 10 Aboriginal children in this state are in out-of-home care. That is, that is a continuing stolen generation. And when you look at the figures from FACTS, from the June quarter from FACTS, we see that there were 73,986 risk of serious harm reports being, being delivered to the, to the helpline. And of those, uh, just over a quarter, only 28% of the kids who are the subject of those Roche reports are actually being assessed in a face-to-face -face assessment. The system just can't keep up. And while we have uh, close to record numbers of caseworkers, we have in this state a mismatch of resources. And why is this important? Because we know that children, when they're removed from their families, have a series of contraindicators for the rest of their life. Just one figure is telling. Children removed from their families are 10 times more likely to see their own kids put into care. Kids who give birth while they, them, while they are themselves in care are the most likely of all to have their children removed. It is a vicious and unvirtuous cycle. And money in the child protection system is heavily allocated to the crisis point. We spend a vast amount of time managing emergencies and removing children and putting them into care. But that means that we don't have the resources, we don't have the focus, we don't have the funding available to do the crucial things that keep kids out of care in the first place. That's supporting families, supporting communities, rather than just taking their kids. So what would you see an additional $1 billion of, invested, of investment in our families produce? Well, we need a two-pronged approach. We need early intervention that gets in as early as possible and helps families, helps kids stay in their community. Aboriginal kids stay on country, stay with kin. And we need comprehensive wraparound services for those kids that are already in care. We can't just abandon them. We know what some of this looks like. It includes support for carers, especially kinship carers, not just in the form of reasonable financial support, but also counselling and classes to enable them to nourish and support the children that are in their care. We all assume that someone is doing this, that we aren't just taking kids from their homes and hoping for the best. But that's not what's happening. We probably should also be considering caseworker management, including tracking and performance reviews of caseworkers. It's pretty much discretionary what caseworkers do and don't do in New South Wales. There's no comprehensive tracking of, checking, tracking of them. There are very few performance standards that are being put in place. And let's be clear, caseworkers have one of the hardest jobs in our society. But we need to ensure that we have changes in place to support them do their jobs fairly, to support them keep kids in with families, not just remove kids and put them into out-of-home care and assume that they're going to be better. Most often, they're not. There are some strong arguments for increasing the leaving care age to 21 and an aftercare support, including a personal advisor system. But we're not seeing that debated because there are no resources. If we all reflect on how much we relied on our parents after moving out of home, we might get a bit of, a, bit of an idea about how necessary this is for kids in care. Then there are some more fundamental realities that just seem to be entirely missed in this state. I like how hard it is for kids who are in care or leaving care to, take care to get a driver's licence and how the lack of a licence can make finding independence even more difficult. We need to set a firm target for the percentage of kids leaving care, care to actually have a driver's licence. The state's their parent. The state should be giving them a driver's licence. Uh, we, need, we need volunteer trainee driving to be expanded. Um, uh, there is some in place, but it's far from adequate to meet the need. 
Having a driver's licence improves kids' access to jobs, education and health services when they're young adults. For many of those children leaving care, it's an essential part of getting independence and keeping it. We need to ensure there's a system in place to deliver that. We have a one-off chance to invest in our most important asset in this state, our children, and it would be a crime to squander it. The motion is... The motion